Hey everybody, it's Tom here with The Solo Game, and today we're going to start setting up uh, Scenario 1 of Gloomhaven. Now, obviously, as I said in my campaign setup, I know so little about this game other than my excitement. I've done a very good job avoiding a lot of spoilers. Um, so I'm not exactly sure how I want these videos to go because I don't exactly know what I have in store for me. But what, I, what I'm planning on doing is this. I know this doesn't look like my typical setup videos. Usually with my setup videos I start with a closed box and we just unpack everything. Well, if you have unpacked Gloomhaven before, you know it is a lot of work. And my plan is to just kind of keep things unpacked and as much off the screen as possible so that we can focus on the actual things that are currently happening because there is so much in this box that we won't be using um, from game to game. Uh, so let me just give you a quick tour of what we've got and then what we're going to do is we're going to show you how we're going to dive into the game, set up a scenario. I don't know exactly how this is going to work, but my plan is to probably do three, two or three videos per scenario. And here's why I think that. I think we're going to want to have a setup video to show how the different scenarios are set up. Um, after this first one, I don't think that those will be very long, but I do like to make those for people who are curious how things get set up and why the choices are made um, that get made. And then do an actual scenario video for the people who only care about watching what happens as we do each scenario. And then I don't know exactly how this is going to go, um, but kind of my plan is to do like one of those cheesy like Talking Dead shows where it's like after the scenario we're going to wrap things up and go buy new items and stuff like that. Now I haven't decided if we'll do three separate videos for every single scenario or maybe we'll just do two videos where we just have like an in-between thing where we wrap things up and then set up the next scenario. I'm honestly not sure. We're gonna play this by ear. Um, but for now let me just give you a quick tour of what we got. We've got the campaign map over here. Uh, the rulebook, solo scenarios, which I'm keeping available in case I want to level somebody up. I've got the scenario book and all of the stickers over here. Um, we've got a whole bunch of all of our cards up here. Tokens galore. We've got our two characters. Um, we have Crystal over here and then Norman. And then we have our party sheet. Remember, we're the Darman party. And then over here, we've got our map tiles. Um, and then all of our deck boxes that those don't come with the game. That's with the broken token insert um, But all those boxes are going to have the bad guys stuff and then we have the bad guys uh, hit points and stat trackers over there and so um, Diving into the first scenario again It's a little bit weird and this first one is gonna be a little bit different because it's the very first one and so what we're gonna do I'm gonna grab the scenario book right here and we're gonna open it up to page one. Now, this scenario book, it's lovely. Um, it's a little flimsy and I've hardly touched it and it's already getting a little damaged, so I'm nervous about this. Um, my plan in the after this is to go into an app that's available. I'll tell you more about that when we do the actual scenario um, playthrough. Um, but for now, I just wanted to show you right here, we have Gloomhaven listed there. This is gonna be the first scenario, we'll look at that when we're ready to read this, that's when the first scenario video is going to start. Um, but for now, we want to welcome you to Gloomhaven by reading this. Um, I think it's probably not super comfortable for you to read off of this page. Um, I'm going to read off of this page, but for you guys, I'm going to go ahead and put up um, a picture on the screen so that this looks nicer and you can follow along easier than me trying to read and adjust this <laughs> for the camera like that. So let me go ahead and put up that image right now. And let's read this. Okay, everyone, welcome to Gloomhaven, by the way. Okay, everyone needs to eat. Whatever your reason for coming to Gloomhaven, out here on the edge of the world, the simple fact is never going to change. A mercenary can't fight on an empty stomach. So when Jekshara of Valareth, <laughs> okay, this is going to be rough on me, woman wearing a red cloak and enough gold jewelry to keep you fed for a decade approaches you in the sleeping lion and offers to pay you 10 gold coins to track down a thief and retrieve some stolen goods. Well, it seems like as good as an excuse to sober up and start paying off your tab. This thief has taken some important documents, says the red-skinned merchant, her tail whipping about in agitation. I don't care what you do to him, just bring back what's mine. 
Based on Jack Shiraz's description, it was easy enough to knock around a few ally. Oh, sorry, knock around a few alley thugs and get a location of the thieves' hideout. You don't find yourself as a mercenary way out in Gloomhaven without knowing how to crack a few skulls. So your target is the Black Barrow. Sounds like a lovely place. And then it shows right here that we have a new location that's going to be a sticker. This is the sticker number and where we need to put it. And we have a global achievement. So let's go to the map and I want to show you more about that. Okay, so that's going to bring us to the campaign board. As best as I can tell, we're mostly going to be using the campaign between scenarios. So that's really where you're going to see this board come into play. As we explore new locations and find things, um, we're going to be doing that. We're going to be finding or doing, I don't know, something about global achievements up here. And then down here, we're going to be checking the uh, Gloomhaven's prosperity levels. And we'll be marking on the board uh, like that. So that's going to be off the screen for this part. So what the very introduction has asked us to do is to add a new location. Um, it's going to be the Black Barrow, uh, sticker number one right here. And we need to add it onto the map at G10. Oh, the sticker is not coming off the page. There we go. Oh, okay. So let me go ahead and find G10. Good thing I teach math or I'd never be able to find this. All right, there's sticker one right here. And we're just going to go ahead and add this sticker on there. I'm going to try to match it up as much as I can so it looks real good. Right there. Okay, we have a location. Looks like there is a checkbox there for if we finish that scenario. I'm guessing these locations are scenario numbers, I think. We were also asked to add a flag, a global achievement sticker, um, that says City Rule Militaristic. So it took me a minute. I don't think this is like a rule... It's not like um, rules for the city, like it's not how the city runs. How would you say that? But it's who's controlling the city right now, and I think it's the military is my best understanding of that. So we're supposed to take off this sticker, and we're going to add it onto the board. Um, I'm hoping there's a sticker that matches it. Maybe, I don't know. Does this even matter? I just think it will. Okay. It looks like it could fit right there. So I'm going to go ahead and add that sticker as best as I can right there. So back into the scenario book, it tells us this. There are a couple of important things you should remember before you begin your um, mercenary career. First of all, separate road events 1 through 30 from the rest of the city cards, then shuffle them. Uh, do the same for the city events 1 through 30. I did that in the very first video. I did that in the campaign setup. These are your starting city and road um, event decks. You can complete a city event once your characters are created, and you are required to complete a road event before the beginning, uh, um, before beginning the first scenario. So let's um, take care of the city event now. So normally we wouldn't set it up this um, extravagantly, but I just want it to look cool for now. So the idea here is that we are in Gloomhaven and we're going to have a city event before we actually end up venturing out. So remember, here's Norman, Crystal. they're hanging out in Gloomhaven, this lady has come to ask for help, and before they get out of the city, this event card happens here. So it says, you are walking home late at night when you hear some suspicious sounds coming from a nearby garden. You move to investigate and a shadowy figure bolts in the opposite direction carrying an armful of vegetables. Do we A. Give chase, thieves must be brought to justice, or B. The thief had the right idea, grab some vegetables for yourself. Hmm, man, this is a tough, because like, okay. Remember, Norman is a zealot. He is kind of this creepy, cult, god-worshipping zealot guy. And Crystal is out for vengeance trying to find the soldiers who killed her childhood friend, if I remember correctly. So I want to role play. I want to be in their minds. Neither of these characters are especially um, light hearted, than light feeling, I don't think. Um, so like, even though in my brain, I usually, honestly, I have a hard time not playing the good guy. I want to do option A. I think thematically, where my characters are in their lives and in their story, they would probably go for option B. So we're going to do that and see what happens. 
uh, here we go. Option B. It says, and then I'll try to not show you the other option in case you don't want to know. All right. In an area cut off from civilization with no viable farmland, fresh vegetables are a rare commodity. The thief already made off with an armful, so what's the harm in taking um, some more? When you get back to your room, you cook up a nice hearty soup and have a great meal. All start scenario. Oh, all of the characters, I think, start the scenario with bless. Oh, interesting. Okay, I honestly don't know what bless is, but I'm sure it's really exciting. I think it's a token. Okay, so I did a little bit of research. I am sorry. I promise you I have read these rules a couple of times, but they are intense. Uh, bless is not a token. It's actually an attack modifier, so I have found these. And what the rulebook says is that these are positive conditions. Um, if a figure is blessed, it must shuffle a bless card into its remaining attack modifier deck. When this card is revealed through one of the figure's attacks, it is removed from the deck instead of being placed into the attack modifier. So we're going to be blessed to have this awesome times two modifier starting out in our deck. And if we ever roll it, then we need to take it out. Or if we ever roll it, if we ever draw it, then we need to take it out. So let me just add these to the attack modifier deck. I'm not going to shuffle right now. Um, but we've got them there for this scenario. Oh, you'll notice I've added some cubes. You'll see why I've added those cubes in the... Um, gameplay video. Uh, yeah, hopefully that will make sense. Okay, we just did our city action. And now the rulebook reminds us that in addition, remember to create the city's available supply of items using all copies of items 0, 0, 1 through 0, 1, 4, so through 1 through 14. Uh, you're encouraged to purchase some helpful items before heading out using each character's starting 30 gold. Here are some recommendations for each class. So I honestly don't remember which page it shows, um, but I do think that we start off in Gloomhaven, we've got 30 gold, and this is what that's referring to. Um, and so while we're in Gloomhaven, one of the things that we can do in Gloomhaven is we can go shopping for items. So just looking back at the rule book, it actually recommends some things for us to start off with, and I'm going to follow those recommendations for sure. It's telling us that the Brute is going to start off with Boots of Striding, item 1, and a Minor Healing Potion, item 12. So I've already set up um, this deck of item cards for us. Uh, we did that again in the campaign setup. Uh, these are items 1 through 14. And so for the Brute, we're going to grab item 1, which is the Boots of Striding. Okay, that sounds good. And then item, uh, what was it? Item 12. Item 12 is Minor Healing. And you can see the cost of these items right here. Um, depending on our party's reputation, on our party sheet, uh, we're starting off here with a zero reputation. That might modify the price of things that we're buying, uh, but for now, we're not modified. We're just starting with a reputation of um, zero, so neutral. And that's going to cost him all 30 of his coins, so he's not going to have any coins to start off. I'm going to just add these atoms. I'm going to add these items into this slot right here. That looks like it'll fit nicely. Okay, so... The scenario book tells us that the uh, Spellweaver should start with the Cloak of Invisibility, item 5, and the Minor Power Potion, item 14. So let's see, item 5 right here, Cloak of Invisibility, that's going to cost 20 during your turn gain invisible. Alright, I remember reading about that. And then what was it, item 14, down here at the bottom, okay, Minor Potion, or Minor Power Potion going to boost some attacks. Okay, cool. And again, that costs 30. So we don't have any gold anymore because we just bought these items. Let's just add those items to her stack right here. Uh, we'll be taking them out shortly, but we'll just put them there for right now. And then really quickly before I forget, sorry with this city action, um, this is telling us how to resolve this card. I'm not going to be ripping up the card, but this is telling us to take it out of the game. It doesn't get shuffled back into the deck. This happened once and it's done. So it's out. Okay, so now here we are in Gloomhaven, which is also right here. This is just a zoomed-in portion, so we're right here. And on the way up towards, what was that called again? Uh, oh, Black Barrow. On our way up there, we're going to have a road encounter. So let me go ahead and draw one of our road encounters. And here's what this one says. Walking among some foothills, you enter a narrow valley and find a large pile of stones blocking your way. Clearly a rock slide occurred here recently. You move closer to the pile and um, despair at just how large those stones are. 
Only someone of great strength and skill could clear the path efficiently. So we've got two options. Option A, we can attempt to clear the stones from the path. Or option B, backtrack and find a way around the stone-filled valley. Um, I don't know. Just looking at Norman, he looks pretty beefy. I'm thinking that these stones aren't too much for him to handle. And she's got, you know, those crystal things on her body. So, I don't know. I don't think that they're that nervous by these stones on the road. They're hard workers. They've been working hard their whole lives. We're going to go ahead and stick with this option up here. Option A. Okay, so if we had the crag hearts um, in this, we would read this one, but we don't. So otherwise, we're going to read this. I'm trying to hide things so you can't get spoiled if you don't want to be. Um, let's see. The situation is not ideal, uh, but you work through the pain. By the time a path has been cleared away, uh, you never want to see another rock in your life. Discard two cards each. Uh, okay, what a way to start. And then this card comes out of the game. All right, so I think what that means, I, I could be wrong, you can correct me if you need to, but we start each game with this many cards in our hand. That's how we start our scenarios. So if it's telling us to discard our cards, which we don't technically have right now, I just think that at the beginning of the scenario, we're going to start the scenario with two cards discarded um, to represent that we are pretty exhausted from having moved all of those rocks. Hmm, okay, well... Not a great choice. We're, we're here we are. And now that we're done with that part, the total introduction, that's going to bring us to the Black Borrow, scenario one. And I'm kind of trying to hide this, I'm going to actually use this rule book very little. What I'm planning on doing instead is on using this app right here. It's a Gloomhaven app. I think it's available on Android as well as iOS. Um, I would just recommend searching Gloomhaven and looking for the one that looks like this. And the reason why I like this is because this is a very spoiler-free way to look at the scenario. So again, you won't see me using the book much. I'm going to be using this app more than anything else. So let's go to scenario one. Um, I'm not going to read scenario one, so ignore that part for right now. Um, but what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be using uh, this app to help set up the scenario so that gameplay feels a lot more smooth. So you can see right here, it's showing us one part of the map, um, and it's telling us which map tiles we need to have ready. Um, I'm going to give you a sneak peek. If you tap on the gray squares, it will show you where the maps go and how they orient. Um, but I want to hide as many of the bad um, folk as possible. Um, and so over here you could see there's some conclusion that's under number one. Um, or some event is happening there, I don't know. Um, and then you'll see the monsters that we're going to need and you're going to see the tokens that we're going to need. Um, and so those are there. Um, my plan is to just set up the actual layout ignore anything that's going to go on it for right now and we're just going to set up the stuff that we can see in this app so for right now i'm looking at the map i want to grab what is that l1a g1b and i one one b i'm not exactly sure but basically we've got to fish out those tiles oh and right here this reminds me we're going to need this tile for the gameplay so i'll pull that out um and then we're just going to look I'm looking for some rectangles and such. Uh, this looks good. Oh yeah, that's the 11B. One, one so we're gonna need that one. We need another one that was similar. Yep, L1A, we're gonna need that. And we need G1B, where is that? Um, long and skinny, this one right here. Okay, I got lucky. These are not so easy to find usually. Okay, so G1B. These are the three tiles that we're going to need. I can just go ahead and pack the rest up. Oh, I can never figure out how I did this. And I know there's like icons on here to show you, but I struggle. Uh, you know I struggle. And so let's look at the app one more time. Um, I know it looks like I need that tile. Uh, let's see. Can we see the tile number? Is that the L... I th oh no, don't look. Okay, I think that's L1A. So let's just grab L1A. That's going to get lined up right here like that. All right. And then 
um, looking at the app. Uh, looks like we're going to have the long skinny one. Just a sneak peek. Okay, I don't want to know what else is in there. And that's going to be the long skinny one right here. And then, sneak peek. Okay, I saw enough. I think we're going to be putting this one like that. All right. Now, I'm guessing we're going to need some door tokens. And I just dug through the app really quickly to find that, yeah, we're going to need some doors here. Well, that's the only door. Uh, there's other doors, but we, we just care about that door for right now. We'll set up the other door later. Uh, don't worry too much about that. So looking at the bad guy, you're going to be able to see what kind of bad guy that we need. So right here in the center, you can see that picture. You might be able to fish that out from the picture. If not, you can just slide over here and just take a quick peek looking at, okay, those are bandit guards. So I need the bandit guards, which I know I've got a fish out of this box. This is the guards box. Again, broken token. This is not with the normal game. Um, and so I'm guessing I'm just going to pull out. Yeah, I need these guys right here. And I'm going to need some of the attack modifiers. So these are the guard attack modifier cards. We're going to need those. I don't think we need any of these for the rest. But who knows? I'll just put them back in the box for now. And then we need to fish out their cards out of here. So you can kind of see they're all labeled. One of these is going to be the bandit guard. Bandit archer. If I had alphabetized correctly, they would be, oh, bandit commander. Bandit guard. Okay, we're going to need these guys. And we're going to need a sleeve. We don't know exactly uh, which level we're sleeving just yet, but we'll get there really soon. Okay, so we've got our bandits ready to go. So we know we're going to be adding these to the map. The question is where? So let's go back to the app and I need to show you how to read all of these colors around it. So, um, oh, it's going to be hard to describe. So let me point it out to you here instead. Okay, so looking at each of these icons, it has three colors. Ignore the red. You're looking at the other three quarter corners around it. Now I'm playing with two characters, which means I need to focus on the top left corner for all of these icons here. If the top left is black for a two player game, you ignore it. So we don't need bandits here or here. We need regular bandits. That's the white part here, here, and here. And then we need an elite bandit right here. So I need three bandits all together. What we're going to do is we're going to take these shuffle them up and we need three of them and I'm going to put them in their spot matching what the app was showing us one two three like that and then to show if they're regular or elite we're going to add them onto these stands and so they're going to be kind of hard for you guys to see maybe I don't love hmm we might have to do I don't know I want you guys to be able to see what's happening we might need another system uh, for gameplay purposes, but whatever. So normally you put them on the stand. Oh, I have an idea. Let me go get cubes. Yes, I think these cubes are going to work out nicely. I got these cubes for a game I've been designing for the last several years that we'll never do anything with, but you know, it's fun. Okay, so I'm going to put cubes on these guys so we could tell if they're regular or elite. Now we need to decide how um, strong these bandits are for our situation uh, so that we can put this thing in the sleeve. And the way that we do that is we need to pick a scenario level. We're going to take the average level of our characters. They're both one right now. Divide it by two, so that would be um, 0.5, and then round up. So our scenario level is one. I was going to make this easier but as I was reading through the rule book it says if you're playing solo because you have so much open information that you need to make it more difficult by adding one to the level so I do want to make it easier by subtracting one uh, to make it easy but then I'm going to be adding one because it's a solo scenario and so we're just going to stick with a normal um, level so down here the scenario level we're going to be at level one that means that all of our monsters are going to be at level one as well and so looking here at the bandit guard, this card has all of these different levels of monsters like that and also on the back. And we're just going to sleeve these so that we can see monster level one. So this is how the game scales both for player count and also as things are leveling up, um, they make it easier. And you'd think I could sleeve this, but you'd be wrong. Okay, there we go. Okay, so those are our bandit guards. 
Now, I'm going to do something differently than I think the rule book suggests. When bandit or when any enemy takes hits, you actually add wounds onto their tracker. Um, for me, I know my personality in games that I've played, I have a hard time, especially with these small numbers and things, I want to know who's out and who's um, being hit and things like that. And so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to actually add... I'm going to put on health instead of damage onto this, and we're going to remove that as we play. Again, be aware that that is different than how most people play this game, but I'm not most people, and I do what I want. So, taking a look here, the white side is the regular bandit guards, the yellow side is the elite. Right here, this icon shows the health. So I need to get 6 health on both of the white um, bandit guards, and 9 health on the elite one. And you can see each bandit has a little tiny number. These were chosen randomly. That's their turn order, basically, more or less. And so um, bandit four and one are going to get six health. Again, that's different than normal. Chill out. Okay, so bandit four and six. Man, why did I draw? Oh, no, bandit four and one. Okay, four and one, they each have six health. We're going to mark that like that. Maybe we'll put it like this so it's a little easier to see from the camera. Okay, and then Bandit 5, he's our elite one. He's going to start off with 9 health. So, 1, 2, 3, I'm sorry, counting this off camera, not very exciting. Uh, and he's number 5, so he's going to get all of these tokens. And I just think for me, that's going to be easier to pull the hits off. Don't yell. And then we're going to keep their attack modifier right here nearby. And now, take one more peek at the app. And these door icons here show you where you can enter into the scenario. So we're going to place our characters on those spots somehow. I don't know what the strategy is going to be. We're just going to throw them on there. So I know the Brute is really strong. I'm going to put him right here. Uh, again, I know that's going to be hard for you guys to see, but hopefully he's big enough and different enough that you can tell from overhead who that is. Maybe we'll bring the camera down diagonally. Uh, we're going to find... We're playing for fun. And then we're going to keep her farther back. She can do range damage more so than he can, I'm guessing. Uh, just from the pictures, it looks like she's casting spells, probably. Um, and the brute just goes and pummels people. So we're going to go ahead and set up our characters right here and here. And I'll also point out that that work that we went through to set up the bandit guard, I'm going to mostly do off camera during the scenario when we enter the other rooms. So when you enter the rooms, then we're going to go look at the map and see who's hiding out in there. And I'm going to mostly just have this stuff set up ready to go. And the last thing we've got to do is we've got to set up camp for our characters. So I'm going to go ahead and put Crystal on that side. We're going to put Norman on this side. Let's zoom in a little bit closer and make sure that their play area is ready for the game. So Norman, let's go ahead and unpack his little crate here. Um, don't know that we necessarily need this in for gameplay. That kind of seems like a between gameplay thing, so we'll pull that aside. We're going to set up his experience and his health here in a second. Um, back in the last video, we found an overall motivation for Norman. Um, we're going to talk more about that in the, in the gameplay scenario, but I'm going to keep that right here in that. And then we have his action cards. We will need to remember to discard two. Why am I shuffling these? I don't know. But we're going to end up discarding two because of that rock situation. Uh, we've got his two items. Got to find a good place for those. As well as his attack modifiers to which we have our blessing in there also. We're going to shuffle those. Now these cubes do not come with the game. Most people don't use them. I'm going to use them to help track which action on which card I'm using. And which card represents the initiative. Because I'm just going to be splaying the cards out um, for all to see. And then we have these tokens down here that we're going to need, but we don't need those on camera. So, let's go ahead and set this up. Norman is at level 1 right now, which means that he's going to start off with 10 health. So let's go ahead and give Norman 10 health, like that. And he's going to start off with 0 experience points. Okay, so that's going there. And we've got his attack modifiers. Where are we going to put that? We've got our health. And we've got our items. Okay, we're going to put these here. I'm planning on putting things on camera like a normal person, like that. We've got the cubes. I'm just going to keep these here-ish items. Okay, let's get these attack modifiers shuffled. Uh, 
Ah, oh my heck. Okay. Tack modifiers. Those are shuffled. Uh, we need space for the discard here. Where should these go? These can go... Yeah. These will go right here. And I know that's his discard pile, so we're going to put his hand here. And at the beginning of the scenario, we're going to discard two cards. There will be lost cards, active cards. We've got this whole area. I can pull back the camera if I need to, but the Brute is ready to go. Um, no. Do you know what? In this video, let's go ahead and pick two cards that we can discard down. All right. I haven't really looked closely at these cards, um, but I'm thinking, what do we not eat, need early on? Thinking we don't need to run a lot or loot at the beginning of the game, so let me just go ahead and discard this one. Again, this is not typical, this is just because of the rocks situation. And, um, yeah, we don't want to do this during the gameplay video, that'll be boring. Any other things? No, oh, that looked like the most boring one. Okay, next thing I'm going to look for is looking for cards with um, these X's. If there's any cards with lots of those X's, I don't want to play those right now, probably. Um, hmm. I gotta look at that icon. I don't remember that icon. This is gonna tell us to put things in the lost pile rather than the discard. Um, okay, that one, maybe? Uh, oh, this looks okay on the next side. Hmm. Okay. This looks like a really good thing that I probably want to save till later. So I'm just going to put that there. Those are his discards. And then we've got his hand right here. All right. It's official. It's not centered, but the Brute is ready to go. Let's do the same thing for Crystal. We're going to pull this out. I don't think we're going to be needing this throughout the scenario. Health. We're going to want these cards for sure. Um, well, yeah, there's her motivation. She's seeking vengeance. We'll look at that uh, in the scenario video so we can catch people up. We've got these cubes that I have decided to use to help me track what my plans are. Um, I got that idea from kind of through my uh, Spirit Island playthrough. I was getting so lost in my planning. I uh, thought those cubes would help. Okay, we've got these items here. And we're done with that. I'll just move that off camera. Bring her down. I think we'll put her about there. We'll set that in just a second. Okay, let's go ahead and shuffle our attack modifiers. She did have a blessing in there too. Okay. Oh, I should have been saying wonderful things. All right, we've got our these. Oh, we're putting these up here. We're going to discard two cards here in a second. Um, she has one. She's at level one right now, level one power, strength, whatever. So she's actually starting off with six health. That's not great. Um, and zero experience points like that. And we're going to put those there. Next up are the items. We'll just keep the items nearby. Let's do a little something, something like that. And we got to go ahead and discard two cards to start off because of the rocks. So again, I'm kind of looking for things that might not apply right off the bat. I could be wrong, but I feel like we're not looting immediately. Uh, so let's just discard that. Um, and, hmm. Okay, any cards with a bunch of these X's? Because I probably want to avoid those at the beginning. Uh, nothing with two of them. But I want to avoid using... Okay, so we're not going to discard these because they don't have any of the X's. And we might not be moving. Okay, hopefully we won't need to heal quickly. <laughs> I say that, you never know. All right, those are the two that we're discarding. Good idea, bad idea, we're gonna find out, I don't know. But there's her hand right there. I probably should have done this earlier as this is something I'm not planning on showing on camera necessarily. Um, every setup video, uh, but we do need to put this elements board out there with these different wooden elements on the inert side There's that One last thing that we need to do for our characters before we end the setup video is we've got to actually assign battle goal cards um, This is probably something I could do in this 
gameplay video, but it seems like a setup thing to me, um, or I'm going to forget. So there's this deck of battle goals, and what we need to do is give it a shuffle. I've already shuffled it, but now I look official. And we're going to draw two cards and pick one for each character. So here we go. For Norman. For this battle, do we want him to do Die Hard or Executioner? And it's one check mark for each. We'll talk about check marks in the third video for this scenario, or whenever I do it. Die Hard. Never allow your current hit point value to drop below half of your maximum hit point value rounded up during the scenario. I, I don't think that's a good one to have because his um, kind of overall scenario is the Zealot one. And he's trying to get exhausted. Uh, how many times? It's like 12 times or something like that. Become exhausted 12 times. So, Nor or Norman's the kind of guy that's trying to get hurt. He's running in. Okay. Kill an undamaged monster with a single attack during the scenario. Now, that seems more up Norman's alley. Uh, we're going to hold on to that one. I think he might be able to pull that off. Um, where should I put it? We're going to put it right here. Right here. Oh, that looks so good. And for Crystal, formerly known as Crystal, uh, we're going to draw two cards. So her overall goal, she's trying to, what was she trying to do? Let me look. She's trying to, oh, she just needs to complete four scenarios in Gloomhaven, and then we'll follow it to its conclusion. But she's out, she's out looking for blood. So we'll see. Okay, Scrambler, take only short rests during the scenario. Hmm. Now she doesn't have that many cards, so short rests... Uh, not a great idea. What's this one? Straggler. Uh, take only long rests. Oh, I swear I shuffled these. Um, I'd rather only take long rests than short rests. So let's hold on to that. We're going to put that right there. All right, you guys, that's it. We are set up, ready to jump into the first scenario. Um, uh, most of the setups I don't think will be this long. We just had to do that initial stuff, talk through some things for the first time. For the most part, I plan on keeping them uh, much more quick, uh, but hopefully this was fun. I have a link to the description of the video I did before this one and the one coming after this one in the description of this video. Um, so if you want to see how we set up the actual campaign, click on that. And if you want to see what happens in the scenario gameplay, go ahead and click on that link. Um, I look forward to seeing you there, and I am really crossing my fingers. Guys, there are no dice here. There are cards to draw, but there are no dice, so I am having very positive thoughts about this. Um, yeah, so I hopefully will see some of you guys in that scenario playthrough gameplay video. Okay, bye!